Welcome to the Alex Adam Show. Welcome back, losers. Special night episode. First night edition ever done, correct? That's right. Rare. This was our original like plan to use this space to to do the podcast, but then we were like lazy, and then we didn't like really try it. But also, it seems I forced like it's quite Nick hot. to to set up this tonight, and I put on my G Shock to celebrate. Rich. This is a. I don't normally wear this. I keep Rich this kind of locked up, you know, because I don't want to go out in town with this on because I'll they'll cut my wrists off. They'll cut my hands off. It's six hundred k. Yeah. It's a six hundred thousand dollar G Shock. <laughs> he, he just Jesus told me it's six hundred. Yeah. Big ones. But for this special occasion, first night podcast, I thought it was warranted. Pretty important. Pretty mm-hmm. important. For sure. We have the mansion behind us. The micro state. That's what yeah. I like to call it. The micro state. That's the official name. And we're just doing a classic little nighttime hang. This is fun. That's right. And we're just going to talk about whatever we figure out to talk about. That's correct. As three friends that talk about stuff. Yes. First question, how was your day? It was mid. You took a nap. Yeah. We were supposed to do this podcast... There's a skinwalker. <laughs> yeah, there's creatures out here. There's a skinwalker over there. Yeah, yeah that's Ralph. I don't worry about him. He's fine. Um, you know what? <laughs> I would like, now that I'm thinking about this, what are skinwalkers? Well, see, the f- number one rule of skinwalkers is you're not supposed to talk about skinwalkers. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not supposed to, you're not supposed to say so that. You're making oh. the first mistake. <laughs> there was a noise over there in the bushes. Well, skinwalkers... Um, are usually found out in the as a skinwalker, one of the leading skinwalker experts <laughs> nationwide. They're normally found in like the western states, Arizona, Nevada, Utah. Um, now, and you know, traditionally they were shaman, you know, like witch doctors of you know, Native American tribes that went rogue, they went bad, they decided to use their powers for evil. So, I think that it's like a process. To become a skinwalker, you have to, like, murder one of your family members in some weird ceremony and have <laughs> sex with them or something and then drink their blood or something. And then, like, you gain powers. You kind of, like, live kind of forever and you can kind of transform into other creatures. Why are they always, like, in the bushes and shit? Well, because it's, it's, I guess it's, it's one of those things where it's, like, it's kind of like you heard the, the thing about vampires where it's, like, a vampire can't just come into your house. No, I've never heard that. Well, okay, so if I don't so, know theory. Let, let me give you help you out for f- in the future. If somebody mm-hmm. knocks on your door, and they're like, "Hey, how you doing? Can I come in?" And then you're like, "No, no," but then they're like, "I want to come in." <laughs> <laughs> And like, then I'm fucking like, this up. By the campfire, fucking whore. And then they want to, and they want to come in, and then boom, you blow them away. Castle doctrine, I'm bitch. Fu- All I hear is I'm noises <laughs> around us right now while I'm hearing these stories. I'm fucking up the thing, but it's apparently like you you have to like invite the vampire in. Oh, so they follow. They're yeah, they're polite. Same with like black eyed kids. You know, black eyed children. Excuse me. You don't know black eyed children. No. It's another like you know like urban legend kind of thing where it's like, I could just like tonight I get like a knock on the door. I see like two little kids. They have black eyes. Well, yeah, they're they're, but they usually are like young, like maybe like six, seven years old. Like usually, it's usually that's how it works. It's like, like maybe like hippies, a six hippies. year old, and maybe like a nine or ten year old. Yeah, maybe that's like a brother and sister kind of look. Okay, they usually have like blonde hair, and it's just like, hey, Mister, my mom's car broke down. Can you? Can we come in so we can? Call, use the phone and then uh, boom but, castle dropped and, and you and blow then, them away but usually we, right when you're standing there with the door open talking to these kids before you even notice anything else you feel really something bad like you just feel Ooh. like something wrong and then you notice that their eyes are completely black the classic trap using kids to get the door open yeah but imagine it's just like kids just need some help what happened to me one time like probably like eight years ago during the middle of the day like I was just whatever at my house, I was staying at, and like, I was only staying at this one house. This happened at for like a month because it was in between. I rented a place for just a month down here, and it was like two little like blonde boys that were like maybe like seven, eight years old. And they're like, "Hey, Mister, we got this for you." And it was like a little, the fuck, 
they had like a little RC car. And immediately when I saw them standing at the, before I opened the door, I could kind of see the, you I think could see I it through outside. the window or something? Yeah, they looked at the window. So like, cause I'm like, who's knocking on this? Nobody even knows I'm here. And I'm like, oh, it's the black eyed kids, but I'm, I'm ready. You already knew about black eyed kids at that yes, point? Yes, of course. But I was ready for it. I opened the door and they said, that and I checked their eyes, normal. So I said, come on and let's hang out. Why the fuck did kids <laughs> knock on your door with a fucking toy? They wanted to, sit, I they wanted to give me a car. That's nice of them. But so I just I said thank you, and they said bye, and then they left. But see, the thing is, if it's black eyed children, you l- you let them in before you notice that their eyes are black. Because normally, if you notice their eyes are pitch black, you're going to be shut the door. And... Ooh, I have the heebie-jeebies. But see, the thing is, if you let the black eyed children in, they can't come in unless you invite them in. Got but it. But then once they come in, usually they'll just kind of be sitting there. They'll try to use the phone, and then you like you'll turn around and they're gone. But. And then what, they haunt you? They eat you? Like, some, what's, the, some, what's the theory? Something really bad happens to you. We just don't know what it is? Like pancreatic cancer, <laughs> and crash your car. You know, that's what, yeah. It's oh, some, shit. It's like an, a bad omen. Yeah. It's but not it's like, like if, they're going to eat you, you alive. It's yeah, like you're going to no. die of cancer. Yeah, if you, but if you don't let them in, you're fine. But if you let them in, like, there's a story, like, one's about, like, mm. letting them in the car. Because the same kind of thing, like you're at a gas station, two kids walk up to your car and like, hey, can you give us a ride? This sounds and just then, like an anti-pedophilia story. And then you're story. Dr- driving. Don't let the and kids you look in your around, van. and then the kids are gone. And then you're, you have Creepy. foot cancer; they have to amputate your feet like a month later. Wow, that's creepy as fuck. Yeah. So with the skinwalkers, I think it's it's one of those things where it's like they maybe they have you have to like come to them, kind of. I kind of thing to where it's like a lot with skinwalkers is a lot of times they imitate voices. Yeah, you've shown so you'll me those clips. be out in the woods. I think it might be a similar kind of thing. You have to invite the evil in. You know what I mean? So, but but in a way, or like allow it to, you know. Yeah. So it'd be like, hey, Alex, and you come just have over to ignore here. It. I, I tripped on a branch. <laughs> it and then that's when I'm like, what's going on? And then like you're behind me and you're like, Alex, what are you doing? I'm like, what the fuck was that? And then it would definitely. It would definitely be like, Alex, it's Pop Pop Joe. Help. I caught, I set fire in the woods. Yeah. Did he, I, did he ever tell you that story? No. Tell her that story about Pop Pop Joe, a legend. Oh, the the trash story. Yeah. So when my parents were building their house up in Maryland. It took like two years, you know. It was like custom thing they did with, you know, of course, the contractors they used were my dad's friends and not good and the kind of drunks. And criminals. Drunk w- criminals. One of the guys, like, OD'd on heroin, died when they were building it. Um, Haunted house. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was towards the end of it. Um, it was like everything was almost done. But my, we had this big double-sided stone fireplace. Beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. You just don't see stuff like that very you often. You don't. They don't make them like that anymore. And um, I was hanging out with my Pop-Up Joe you know, my grandma and like we went to McDonald's, you know, we had a nice little lunch at McDonald's and we're like, that's right. Checking the house out, you know, before we'd moved in, anybody moved in, but we, you know, just seeing how things are going, hanging out, picking up sticks or something. He'd make us pick up sticks a lot for no reason. Um, but he was just like, let's burn this trash in the fireplace. So we burned the McDonald's trash in the fireplace and it stained, it stained the side, like the bricks of the side of the fireplace real bad. My dad, Got very mad at him about it because you shouldn't burn trash inside the house. <laughs> house. Very <laughs> valid. Yeah. But in, in Pop Up Joe's defense, I think he, I don't know. It, I think it made sense at the time, you know? I didn't, he didn't mean anything. Uh, he, he didn't mean any harm by it. Okay, wait. Was that the full story? Yeah, it's not really. St- story. How did that have to do with anything with spooky? He just loves it. He just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, he thinks it's the funniest thing ever. It's just such a good story. It's such a, it's such a boogered thing to do. It's like a brand new house, and you immediately go and burn trash inside. That is really crazy. <laughs> it's actually, like so I didn't really ridic- think about it's how it's a brand crazy new custom built house, and you just burn like just trash that you know is going to cause cancer. And your grandpa's like, "Hey, let's burn a bunch of McDonald's garbage inside of it." <laughs> that actually is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. I don't know if it gets any better than that. It's such a good story. That is also just so unrelated. Yeah, no, it didn't but have maybe to be. it's also just weird. It is. Weird. I guess it's just as ridiculous as believing there's children that knock on your door and politely yeah, or ask skinwalkers or oh, Wendigos. Okay, or whatever. What are Wendigos? I don't know. 
Wendigos are like, I like really similar. I like how you immediately know all the shit. You just go right into it. I want to know now because I feel spook. It's feels spooky, scary out here. Yeah, I mean, Wendigos are, are really similar to kind of Skinwalkers. Probably you know mistaken for each other a lot. My understanding that Wendigos is more of a, you know, probably a similar kind of thing. I think with Wendigos, you become a Wendigo by cannibalism. So I think that the becoming a skinwalker is not necessarily like a cannibalistic thing. You have to like murder somebody. And then, but I think it's like a Native American kind of like you, it happened from like cannibalism. And then I think Ooh, Wendigos seem creepy. to be more, I think they're, from my understanding, I think, they're more aggressive than skinwalkers. I bet Wendigos were real because I bet, you know how you can get diseases from eating human brains and shit? Imagine, like, sometimes some people just had, they got some weird fucking disease from eating a brain, and then they just became these, like, rabid psycho, like, it just gave them schizophrenia or something, but for cannibalism. And then they would just, like, just start eating people and being insane. It's yeah. probably what a Wendigo, it probably was a real thing. No, the, the, no, they're real, yeah. Oh, this stuff's real. The skinwalker thing really scares me, though, because those TikTok videos where you hear them in the, and it's just a person out in the woods, like, riding their horse, and you hear, hello? <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> hello? Yeah, they're out there. My favorite are, like, I don't like the, the gay skinwalkers, because you'll be, like, walking in the forest late at night, and, you know, and they'll be like, hey, honey, bring that ass over here. And then you're like, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. I've heard those before a lot. Very often. Do you guys they believe frequent, uh, actually in Fort, stuff like the that? Fort Lauderdale area? Quite yeah. A bit. <laughs> the Wilton Manors area. Wilton just Manors the, just regular. Yeah. yeah. Just the, the regular streets. Yeah. Nick has a problem with uh, just homosexual men minding their business late at night, maybe looking to have a little fun. Yeah, don't call them skinwalkers. <laughs> yeah. So bigoted of you. Yeah. I they're, just, they're just horny gay men. Yeah. What was your problem with, with old gay men wearing fishnet t shirts trying to? What if all so, skinwalkers are that? off in the middle of the night, hiding in the shadows. What if all <laughs> skinwalkers? That? You know who you, you know. Normal. You know. Last podcast here, you were describing the the, the man that was that was mm. clawing yeah, at you. That's, and, that was a skinwalker. Yeah, that's a skinwalker. What if all skinwalkers are just that type of person, just in your bushes, like hello, <laughs> <laughs> like just they want to fuck so bad, but it they're so scared. It could be that you're skinwalkers, all skinwalkers. They really just they're not trying to eat you. They just want to fuck. They just want to fuck, and <laughs> they're and they're just so ashamed of how they look. They only want to stay in the shadows. Could yeah. you imagine all skinwalkers are incels, and they just want to fuck, and they try and imitate a voice that you know and you love to get you to fuck them, and it never works. And they probably go back to their house or their mother, and they're like, "It didn't fucking work again. <laughs> I tried, mom. I tried putting myself out there, and it just doesn't work. I can't believe this life I got." <laughs> and it's just like, "Honey, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to screech from the bushes." She's like, "Honey, honey, you're six foot nine. You weigh <laughs> eighty two pounds. You're translucent. You have six eyes, and you have fangs." <laughs> It's no wonder no one loves you. Go to the gym. That's what Skinwalker Mommy says. Yeah, and then he just gets violently gym pilled. Skinwalkers kind of scare me because I feel like it's the one thing I could maybe believe in. I'm not gonna lie. What about yourself? I got. I believe in myself. That's good. No, but like I don't believe in ghosts or anything like that. I don't not believe, but I don't believe. You know what I mean? Like my friend says that she's seen ghosts in her childhood home, and like her mom can speak to ghosts, and they've told all these crazy ghost stories. Which friend is this? <laughs> <laughs> that I grew up with, and like multiple what? people that I know, and I just, and I, and it's not like I look at them and think, oh, you're just fucking delusional and schizophrenic, and you saw an old person sitting in the chair across from your bedroom every night for a year or something. Well, that was probably real. That was probably <laughs> because the thing is, this is the crazy th story she had. Her house in London. Okay. When we were in high school, she had grown up there like most of her life, and. Her mom had, I don't remember the specifics of this, but anyway, her mom would like see a man sitting in the armchair at the end of their bed okay. uh, in the parents' bedroom for like a year. Like she just felt like a spirit lived there. She never mentioned it to anyone because she didn't want to seem crazy. And then her daughter was sleeping in her bed when she was like four years old or something. And she was like, mommy... Who's that man over there? Turns out her husband was just a cuck, sitting in the cuck chair. And so then there's, she was like, oh, my daughter can, like, see spirits also. And then I was like, and she, and she like, remembers that. And so I was like, well, I don't think you're fucking crazy, but I also don't really believe in ghosts. What's your, what's your, opi your opinions? I, no, I believe, I believe in ghosts. Well, I you believe in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You believe in everything. You every believe in ghosts? No, no, no. 
I think that that woman probably took too many Percocets, and her kid got into it. He's a cringe lord atheist person. And it can. I'm not yeah. an atheist. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> you should be wearing a Okay, fedora. so maybe I'm right in the middle. You're atheist. I'm agnostic. You're a believer. That's right. I'm a mm-hmm. true Christian. Yeah. So we have the full panel here, the full <laughs> spectrum. I'm not even an atheist. We were talking about Buddhism yesterday. You've been, you've been labeled. Okay, so yeah, just accept your labeling. Yeah, take it. <laughs> Folks, this might be my last episode on the show as a... As a as We're a, just bullying him today. As a reviled Stop atheist. Stop sweating. <laughs> Stop sweating. Stop sweating, atheist. As a... <laughs> folks, I've... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I've, I've been on... I like saying ladies and gentlemen because it feels like traditional I broadcast. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Mm. Just right in the middle of my story. <laughs> take your no feet out. It's, like, God, it's getting a little boring, isn't it? Completely it distract from out. what I'm saying. <laughs> no, please continue. I do respect you. Uh, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I yeah. do. I swear. As she's as she's prodding me with a with a t- with a hor- like a cattle prod. I, I respect you. Do you, you. want the toe again? <laughs> not again, dude. Not again. I, I already had a gay man try and forcibly kiss me last week. I'm not doing this twice. Aww. Um. Well, what were you wearing? Wait, but why? I, 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 I really. <laughs> what did you do to provoke it? <laughs> it? Might be the funniest thing you've said in a minute. Um, what were you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a fishnet shirt and booty shorts. I was completely naked <laughs> <laughs> in his bed. Um. Nothing. I have nothing to say. <laughs> I, I don't even want to say Wait, it. I, no, I genuinely. This- Finish your story. I don't really. I don't have any spooky, scary stories. Well, no, I but was he was gonna. You were gonna. You were gonna comment about not being a. Oh yeah. What yeah. do you believe in? Oh yeah, nothing. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I've been on Lexapro for about three days now, and I'm gonna tell you right now, the sun shines a little brighter, the sky's a little bluer, the breeze is a little bit breezier, the clouds are a little bit puffier. Um, you sound like you're on the verge of suicide. I think. I think things are looking up for your boy. Are they really? I think uh, I think soon I'm going to... He's lying, right? I think soon I'm going to be free of a lot of my problems. <laughs> I knew it. It's a fucking suicide and rant again. Let me again. tell you something, folks. I can't wait. That's you know, it. that is a side effect of Lexapro. I was told I'd be happy, and I'm happy. You have crazy eyes right <laughs> now. <laughs> anyway, no, I don't have any stupid, spooky, scary... No, but do you believe in... What do you believe in? Let's talk about religion. <laughs> Nothing. I don't care. I don't. It's all. A gr- it's all a big grift. I don't. I don't so you are shit. an atheist. No, I'm not. Because I'm not. Are you a- agnostic? Yeah, probably agnostic. I just don't know. And he I he doesn't care enough about any of it to. Yeah, it doesn't. It's make not it. worth the. Yeah, I'm agnostic. That's it's, how I feel. It doesn't. I could even no matter how much I think about it or whatever, I'll never know. Yeah, that's it, what I think. It doesn't make it. it like you know, because there are people on Reddit and in other places in the world who are just absolutely seething, frothing at the mouth atheists that just think all Christianity is bad. Yeah. And it's all pedophiles. And they're wrong because it's mostly bad and mostly pedophiles. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it's true. Religion can help pe- a lot of people. Uh, you know, and religion does some help a lot. some kind of purpose. In this it does. Shithole. And to be fair, most of those people have an IQ on the lower end of the spectrum. Not that I don't. I do, too. Um, we all need something to believe in. But when I was a boy, I started worshiping Kuru, the monkey god, and he sits in the sky on a big banana. And if you are uh, a good and charitable and honorable person, you get to go join Kuru on the big banana, and you just kind of slide back and forth for eternity with Kuru, and you're happy. Now, Is that what you believe in? And listen. Now, if you're not a good person, if you do bad things, you deceive people, you steal, <laughs> cheat, lie... You end up in a peel full of acid and cum for eternity. Did you make this up or is this real? So you can either that's real swing I've back, seen it. swing back and forth with Kuru. He's already he wants to be in the cum peel. Yeah, that he would, wants to be in the cum banana. That would probably be heaven for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so that's what I believe. I worship Kuru, the monkey god. I hear nothing about Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, any of these other deities. Take that home. Take well, that shit home. Okay, that's actually not even true because the other night you were telling me about how about the the like thirteen thousand year old guru that lives in the mountains. Oh yeah, because that's cool. In India. Yeah, because you know why? That's the original creepy pasta. I don't know what that means. So the creepy pastas are like creepy stories on 4chan that people like uh, essentially make up. Yeah, right? it's the stuff I listen to. It's all the, the time. stuff he listens to that 
the predominant demographic for that is uh, 12 year old boys. But do, I thought you believed in that that maybe people did see that that guru. I'd like to believe that. I'd also like to believe I'm going to find happiness one day. The but skinwalkers are out and fucking active right now. There are no skinwalkers. This is there are no skinwalkers. I'm hearing here. noises. You, there's a crickets. So you don't actually believe that guru? People actually saw him, and he's thirteen thousand years old. Oh, I mean, I want to. I want to. I'd like to. I'd like to have a little bit of faith. Because when we were talking about it, you, it kind of seemed like you might believe. Just well, let them tell the story about it. Yeah, What's the story about it. Well, yeah, please do. Whole, well, the whole story is essentially is that there's this uh, this guru he practices. It's called Kiriya Yoga, and he lives in like the very mountainous regions of the Himalayas, and he's been alive for like two or three thousand years. And he will only reveal himself to certain yoga practitioners when they get to a certain level of enlightenment. Um, there's a very good book. It's called Autobiography of a Yogi, written by a follower of his who was like in his late 50s and lived in L.A. And he was doing the whole yoga thing, showing people how to do yoga. And then one night he was Raping like, women. Okay. <laughs> he was not doing that. Again, this is why we don't talk about certain things on the show. Um... And he was kind of doing his thing, and then one night he was like, hey, I'm not going to be around much longer. And then the next day he died. Not He didn't kill himself. He just, natural causes, just dead. And I respect that, because I think that's kind of cool. How do you think he knew? I don't know. I think he probably just got a feeling, you know. Because they say, like, I've read, like, some stuff. I don't know how the ver the veracity of such claims are, but I've read some stuff like, hey, sometimes people can feel when they're going to, you know, when it's time, like your brain can kind of just be like, hey, it's, we're fucked. And I have a feeling, <laughs> I have a strong feeling his brain was like, hey, you're a vicious alcoholic. You're fucked. And he was like, hey, guys, I think I'm fucked. And then that was the end of it. So I think stuff like that's cool. I don't really care for any of the, the, the big three, as, as they're known, religions, because they're too, I don't know, they're too marketed and they're just, they're, they've been bastardized and, and, People just seem to only use them for grifting purposes. Except Judaism. You can't grift Jews. It just can't be done. So, um, you know. I think that's a very good take. That's my that's my take on it. And I was going to say something that I remember I can't say it on the podcast. But, um, you know. <laughs> that's what I think about uh, religion and the such. As someone who had uh, Catholicism shoved down his throat from... Uh, utero to about the age of 15, 16, and decided, hmm, this sounds like a bunch of bullshit. This sounds like a bunch of hogwash, if you ask me, Cleet. What are the big three? Christianity, Islam, Judaism. I mean, Buddhism is probably, I mean, everything is bigger than well, Judaism. That's a, yeah, I mean, it, that's a mono, three big monotheistic religions. Yeah, mm. essentially. But, I mean, Judaism is very small compared to, you know. Very small and very powerful. Every, yeah. Quite odd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, now those are kind of like the big three of the, you know, because a, lo a lot of times in this country, a lot of times in this country you'll hear, you'll hear things like Judeo-Christian yeah. values. Yeah, yeah essentially, I do hear that a lot. Because essentially like Christianity just ripped off a bunch of Judaism. Yeah, it's just like the second coming of it, is it not? Yeah, it's like Judaism light. Like yeah. in, in a lot of Judaism, like... Isn't it the, the big difference is that the, the Judaism still believes in the Old Testament? Yeah, well that's the thing is they don't believe in the New Testament. And the thing is in the Old Testament, and we've talked about this before on the podcast, I think in the very first one... There was a lot less flowery forgiveness. In oh, the, yeah, it was harsh as fuck. It was like, hey, you stole this orange. We're going to cut your hand off. Yeah, it was harsh. Yeah. Hello, base department? Hello, base, hello, consequences department? You know? And then, obviously, you know, the Christians rewrote it. They made it way more marketable, which is a genius move. It's like, hey, did you kill 10 people? I did. Are you sorry about it? I am. And then you're good to go. And they're like, all right, uh, give 10% of your income to the church and you're good. Well, you do that with any religion. You're supposed yeah. to give actually like 95%, but a lot of people don't listen to that. Do they do that in Buddhism? No. In Buddh I guess they just take your whole life if in, you really are enlightened. Well, in Buddhism, you kind of just wear a, you wear like a, a smock and sit in the road for a while. I think Buddhism has beautiful tenets. Yeah. I, I, my, my buddy was telling me that one of the tenets of Buddhism is eating your own cum. 
Yeah. Well, this is the most Buddhist man alive. Though. Yeah, and then I said, I think I know the Dalai Lama. I think I've met the man before. Literally. I think I've encountered him. Which is why we probably should ask him about religion. He's yeah. the most holy one here. No, he's actually, he's do he's dove into a bunch of different religions. I know, I remember. Uh, he's the, a very the, experienced. The, the, the fans of this podcast might not know that you... Are a priest. You studied many a uh, religion. Yeah, I went to seminary for a few years. It's where I learned all my best tricks. What got you started looking into religion? Was it just a no, I was, interest? I was like 14, and I was like raised Catholic too, went to Catholic school. And like in eighth grade, you had to do the confirmation. It was one of the sacraments. Like the, where, you, you know, they have a ceremony where you basically kind of just affirm, like, I believe all these things. I want to be Catholic. I want to. And I was like, hold on a second. Do I believe in any of this shit, actually? And I was like, is this stuff High real? IQ behavior. Yeah, I was just like, I keep hold on a minute. And then, like, cause I'd get into arguments with, like, the, the teacher who was doing the confirmation classes and stuff. And then I think one time, you know, she was wearing a, a jean jacket, I remember, I think. Nice New York lady. Were but you horny? She's fucking classic, He's baby. like, I think she had fucking big titties. Classic. I think she, yeah. But, you know, she's like, well, then, if you think that, then you shouldn't get confirmed. I said, you know what I mean? And I was just like, well, all right, bitch. And... So then I kind of went on like this, you know, religious spiritual quest to try to figure out what was real or not. And for a few years, I became obsessed with. That's sick. Just trying to, you know, I, I bought tons of books. One year for Christmas, I had my my mom and dad like that, you know, like Christmas list thing. I just had them like buy me like twenty different books about theology, different all kinds of like Christian theology and other religions and stuff. And I was just High reading IQ all this. behavior. So, what would you call that? Is a big waste of fucking time. It's true. Well, it's the. It's but at least the, you were young. It's the classic <sighs> amateur theocratist to porn star pipeline. Yeah, and yeah. I cannot tell realizing you. you can't believe in anything. So then you're like, oh, all this. Well, is that's fake. I got to a point. I got to a point where I was just like, you know, I thought that I made some breakthroughs different times, and I thought, you know, um, you know, for a while, I, for a while, I was drawn more like Protestant Christianity, and and. Uh, Calvinism in particular was very intriguing to me. I like that a lot, which is basically kind of like the guy kind of predetermines every single thing that happens. Shit. So there's no real free will or anything. It's all just. See, I think uh, that actually I, I've I've kind of leaned towards that at some points. I think that's a lot like. I think that like that kind of system is an easier pill to swallow for some people because it's like, oh, it's not my fault. And then it's a it's a very hard pill to swallow for a lot of people because when something terrible happens to you and you're like, wait a minute, why would God want to do this to me? So it's like kind of like that weird... I was getting into it right after like 9-11 happened. <laughs> and I told my parents like, no, God brought those towers down. Jesus Christ. And they're like, our <laughs> was son is fucking crazy. Yeah, Holy I was like, shit. no, that's... God needed he, he made that happen. And you were fucking, he made me say this. You right were like now. fourteen years yeah, old. Yeah. Could you imagine your fat fourteen year old son walks into your kitchen and, he, and, they, and like you're all you're upset over nine eleven and your fucking your Loretta Fedora son is just like, No, God wanted that to happen and he just struts out. <laughs> I would I would I would have been I Deus Volt. I would have grabbed that belt and started whapping away at you for just being such a fedora wearing fucking weirdo. That is like such a interesting thing to think about though because when you do get into the concept of free will there's a lot of people who study free will and and aren't necessarily sure that we have it we might have the idea or the the, the it looks like we have free will it feels like we have free will but maybe it's yeah. all kind of yeah there's a lot of like the neuroscientists or fake neuroscientists mm -hmm. or philosopher people that like love to that's a it's always a big thing on social media and TikTok and stuff. People talk about how, like, free will's fake and it's not. Mm -hmm. I just, to me, a lot of that stuff is, like... It's just, it's just all, like... What, what are you guys it? even talking about anymore? Like, because what somebody is like, oh, this means it's free will or this, it's like, you know... I, you know, I think that there's... You know what I mean? Like, with your circumstances and, like, certain things, probabilities of, like, you're going to make these choices most likely or yeah. these other choices. But yeah. I just feel like ultimately, like, you know, there's some kind of X factor that exists with, with people where, yeah, you know, I don't know what that is. To me, that's one of those things that really, honestly, like, when I see those videos, I don't even, I just don't even want to, like, dude, I'm good, bro. Because, like, if you... 
I don't know, some, with certain kind of philosophies or whatever, it's like, okay, so free will doesn't, then, and now what? What's your point? Yeah. What, what am I supposed to do with this information? That's the thing. A lot of it, it's like, we'll never fully know. So you can't fully be like, that's true or that's true. We just don't know. And yeah. then, so then it's like, what's the fucking point? We just do what we do, whether it's some genetically pre-programmed thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's noises in the bushes, and I swear to God, I'm going to see eyeballs. Yeah, that's Gary. Would you leave him alone? He, <laughs> live, he lives back there. Gary, I'm sorry. She's being a big pain in the ass tonight. I don't like this gooey stuff. And Gary doesn't like having weird women Do you guys like horror movies? No. You seem like someone that would love horror movies since you listen to all these Skinwalker stories. I'm not really that big on a lot of the horror movies, to be honest. But you listen to Skinwalker stories to go to sleep every night. Yeah, because it's uh, to me, it's a better form of media. I oh, so you like more. the audio. You don't necessarily need visual. <laughs> well, the visual can be fine, too. I mean, I like, you know, in the, in the videos, we'll have, like, screenshots, the 4chan threads, <laughs> the green text, and the, maybe, like, somebody's like, this is what the creature looked like, and it's like a little doodle. Of, like, fucking, but that's, you know, that's cool. This, you is, this, this is, is when people lose all religion, this is what they have. Yep, the three of them sit in their backyard and talk they about religion. They have 4chan threads about skinwalkers and porn. I don't like <laughs> I don't like horror movies. I never have, um, just because I feel like my real life is scary enough. I said that a bunch of times, and then also I just I remember when I was a kid, I was in like the eighth grade or something. No, I was actually even younger. I was like probably like eight, seven, eight years old. My dad made me watch this movie called The Bone Collector, mm. which if you know for the some of the older folks in the crowd who aren't completely ignoring my story because Miss Barry is eating her own feet. I'm listening. Um, it's not about you listening. It's about the <laughs> audience. But um, he made me watch that movie, and it fucked me up. And then years later, I went to... This how this how shot out I was. I went to go see King Kong, and I couldn't even... I was so horrified, I could not sit through you know, it. No, that used to terrify me. I'm not going to lie. And I don't know if it was the monkey. I don't know if it was <laughs> Jack Black. I don't know if it was the whole premise of what it was. But I literally had to tell my friend's dad because we were in the eighth grade and we had to have him come to see it. I was like, hey, man, look, I'm real fucked up right now. I got to get out of this movie theater. And I did. I went and I sat outside for like the last hour and he sat with me. And I was like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, I don't care. It wasn't a very good movie. <laughs> and ever since then, I refused to watch any horror movies. Was that the scariest movie you've ever seen? No, the scariest movie I ever saw was like Saw 3 or Saw 48 or whatever stupid Saw version it was. What was yours? I don't even know. It's been so long since I watched any. I mean, um, maybe. Look, I'll say this right now. I might offend a few people. The, the problem with the horror movies is almost none of them are even really that scary. That's why I don't fuck Whoa. with them that much for the most part. Pitchforks. What's Like when I was a kid, I got really into Like when I was young, I watched a lot of Twilight Zone. They formed a lot of my understanding of the world and thought process. And, like, not every Twilight Zone episode is scary. But I remember one of the first ones I saw was one where it was, um, I think it was an early one, where, you know, and this is back in 19, you know, 61. 1900. 1900. (laughs) (laughs) Back in the olden days. But it was, like, this, this story about a town that somehow just disappeared. One day, the people, like, woke up, and their little hamlet, there was just, like, fog all around it to where it's like you, if you try to leave like you, you're just back in town like you, there was every, the rest of the world was gone it was just this town and it was because of this little boy this little boy who had like red hair lived in this town and he decided that he didn't want the rest of the world to be around he had the power to just anything to just change anything with his mind that's sick and so it was like the whole town was like super nice to him all the time because they're so, because it's like you said something you didn't like. There was like one guy in it who's like, he snaps and is just like drinking whiskey, like getting drunk, even though like the kid doesn't like it. So nobody's like drinking anymore. And he's like, this scotch. Joe, look, I found the scotch, my favorite one. It's the last one. It's so good. I could have a little drink. It's like, Jimmy doesn't like that. Jimmy doesn't. And he's like, oh. And he's like, Jimmy, it's okay, right? And he turns him into like a fucking jack in the box or something. Like, fucking. That's cool. You know, that's, that is cr- ch- creepy. That's children scary. are scary. That's scary. Like, the, the, pr- the problem with a lot of horror movies is there's no real, there's no real subtlety. There's, there's no real. Well, I think the problem with a lot of horror movies is that people die in them. 
And I think a lot of horror movies would be better if people just lived. I think you two are too old because the new horror movies are all about extreme psychological mental illness and torture. There, I mean, there, and that that's, is there's a lot of a lot of newer ones for years I haven't seen. Where I'm sure there's somewhere I would be really the new ones with. are like there's certain ones that are just classic good horror movie. And they're not that scary, and it's cool. But then the traumatizing ones now are just, like, deeply psychological mental illness terror. Like, going through a mental illness nightmare. Like, you're slowly going schizophrenic in a nightmare. Every day of my life. And those <laughs> are the, like, mental illness terrifies me. So those are the ones that just scare me so much. Climax by Gaspar Noe, I think his name is. Traumatizing. I cried for, like, six hours after I watched it. I think I have PTSD. And it's just, and it, but it's not even horror. It's just pure trauma. It's just watching people. Have I ever told you about this movie? These dancers go out, they're, they're out in the middle of the, the woods in France at a dance camp thing. And it's just like a warehouse and they're all sleeping there for the night. And they started the dan this dance party. And this girl, spoiler alert, doesn't matter because the movie's going to traumatize you anyway spikes the punch with acid and no one knows um so of course they climax to the peak of like ecstasy all of them dancing fucking everything and then it slowly just descends into like the peak of terror and people are raping each other killing each other this this mother tries to protect her child that's out there with her and she puts him in the one door she can lock which is the electrical room and he fucking electrocutes himself and then she can't get in the room to open it. So she's just outside cr sobbing, crying. And it's so believable. And they can't escape and they can't get out. And the movie starts with you see this woman crawling through the snow. And you're like, oh, it's kind of beautiful. The movie ends with that woman crawling through the snow and you realize she's dying. She had just been like raped by a ton of people and like bullied. All these people were like high as fuck bullying her till trying to get her to kill herself. And then she's like bleeding out and she's crawling through the snow to try and escape. And then she just dies out there. Anyway, the most traumatizing movie I've ever watched. That sounds like your average rave night in New but York But literally beautiful. There's a 45-minute scene with no cuts. Rave culture is so beautiful. It is so, what just so poor? terrifying. And it's also one of the most beautiful movies ever. Like, I love that movie, but I, have, I had extreme... It was the scariest thing I've ever watched because it was just an actual nightmare. And it could, it's like reality. It's just bullying and, like, rape and... Uh. I, I agree with you. That sounds very... Very scary and yeah. intense. So that is I, the new would, type of horror movie. I would movie. say, though, that the whole scenario is completely unbelievable. It and, is, and but if you watch it... No, I'm sure it might be done really well. I'm just saying, like, you put... At, that's not going to really happen. <laughs> like, no. Like, three people might have sex. Most people are just going to be like... You want to... <laughs> yeah. You want to know that... I don't think you, I can honestly, drive. Honestly, you should watch it. I would be really curious to think what you have to say about it. Okay. You know what? The, sc I, the scariest movie I've ever seen... Was there was a guy when I was growing up in Long Island, a guy lived down the like five houses down, and his name was Robert. And he was this story so already so scary. <laughs> already so scary. Oh, Robert. And his and he was probably forty three. And I think he worked in middle management at like some logistics company on Long Island. And um you know, he had he had uh two kids with his wife, and then his wife had a kid from another marriage, and she was Gross. This woman was not attractive looking at all for many, many, many reasons, some of which I will not say here. And, um, you know, so Robert kind of just plodded along as menial white collar job making, you know, 80K a year, which on Long Island is, you know, lower middle class, I suppose. And, um, Robert just every single day went to work, came home, went to work, didn't go to the gym, just ate kind of crappy, you know, ate a lot of, a lot of Diet Coke, a lot of, a lot of yodels, um, a lot of highly processed food products. And then one day Robert comes home and he sees his wife with her personal trainer that he pays for. Mind you, she's been going to this personal trainer for, I mean, probably six months she had lost no weight. And, <laughs> based, you know, Robert, being the good guy that he is, wants to keep things together for the kids. Also, he cannot afford a divorce. I mean, God forbid. So he, you know, he's willing to forgive this. He's willing to forgive this indiscretion. And 
every day he would come home and his kids would be playing Nintendo 64 on the TV and he would go in he would go into his his office and he would kind of sit there and he'd open up the drawer and he sees his grandfather's revolver and he thinks it is today the day and every time his kid would come in the room and be like dad 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 and he oh, closes the drawer what's up son right and then one day robert's alone no kids in the house just him and his wife he goes into that he goes into that same office opens that same drawer picks up the gun looks up there's no kids there's no kids to come in and say dad and then his wife says robert you didn't take out the trash you useless piece of shit and robert looks at his weapon <laughs> Make sure it's loaded. All six in there. And he says, I'm on the way, honey. I'll come take it out right now. And he goes into the kitchen, and you hear two loud bangs. Him and his wife? I'll leave, I'll leave the audience to suck that one. But yes, that's the scariest story you could ever have. That weird acid trip shit's so fake. That's just like a reality. <laughs> that's just like reality for many people. And that's more horrifying than people taking fake acid and, and rape fucking each other. <laughs> so that's why I say I don't watch horror movies. I, that's, that's to me, I because real life is scary enough. I, yeah, I appreciate a little bit of subtlety, like a little bit of tw twisted off kilter. But I, I think you might be right. Some of these newer ones might be a lot more horrific. Yeah, if they're a little more psychologically kind of inclined. Well, I never watched horror movies growing up because they terrified me. I remember my 12th birthday party. My friends and I, my girlfriends came over to my house and we all wanted to watch a scary movie. And my mom had got us Haunting in Connecticut. Have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah, Fucking so. terrifying. No, I it's like, so. I, I will always have this visual. It was the first horror movie I ever watched. And I remember the guy like, it's just one of those classic horror movies. Like he, they, they buy this new house and the guy like puts his arm up on the pedestal or the pillar that's holding up the front of the house. There's a skinwalker. And he he leans up against the pillar and it, it breaks and his hand falls in it and just brains and body parts just come out of the pillar. Ooh, and at 12, 13 or whatever, I was terrified by that. And so I was like, I hate horror movies. I couldn't go to sleep without thinking about it. I had a skylight in my roof that you couldn't cover. And every night I would like go like this and hide my face from it because I swore a face was just going to pop up there. Like I was just, hor th that stuff scared me. I was scared of the dark, everything. But then only in the last year, I've been like, you know what? People, lots of people watch horror movies. I should not be such a pussy. Like I should learn how to be desensitized to this and like enjoy it as an art because other people can do it. So I started forcing myself to watch horror movies and I started small with um, like Rob Zombie movies, like kitschy ones. Like House of a Thousand Corpses, great movie. Now, see, it's, in movies and like those that, I like. Now, movies like that, I can say like that's that's cool. But those are kind of that's entertainment where it's like I feel like I need to be drunk and high. Well, because they're not really, scary at all. To to really appreciate the you need to, you need to be drunk and high to take a shit. Yeah, that's true. It's not that's not really a, a that's not really a great input for me because that is just you in every activity of daily life. Other than like four things. No, yeah, there's plenty. Of, which shitting is one I can do sober. Thank you very much. What I is enjoy it? Great shitting. Now, if I don't going to the gym, I had to almost shit myself when I walked to Nelly Fitness the other day. Oh yeah, he told me about that. And because I ate five guys for the first time in like three weeks, and Good realized you, like King. I was po I po I, I've been eating poison. So I switched <laughs> over to a little more organic, healthier food every day than eating cheeseburgers every day. But I was like, I was taking a pee, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to go sit down. I realized, because like, when I work out, I leave my phone in the car. I don't take my because to me, I need to. I don't have no headphones. I'm what? Yeah, dog. no, yeah, he doesn't have. He he goes in raw. He goes in completely raw. I've called him before. And he's in the gym. You ain't here. You ain't getting no worse. He's he leaves his phone in the car. I'm I in the couldn't be asked to work out in the gym. I could run without without music, but in the gym. Yeah. And see, and now he, you're you're a full on psychopath. Yeah. And then and then he and then he wonders <laughs> and then he wonders why every single schizophrenic at the gym comes up to him and is like, "Hey, bro, how's that workout? That's a cool Wait, watch really? you got there." Wait, really? People people talk to you at the gym? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's one guy named Glenn who, who talks to me. It's because you don't have headphones. Yes. You yeah. don't think you're busy. Yeah. 
Well, you know what, though? Some people need to take that bullet for other people. Wait, when you go and, and run? that's part of my service to mankind. That's actually true. Because I'll talk to those <laughs> Thank people. Thank God. I'll talk to those people for like 15 minutes. Oh, no, he will. He will. He will. <laughs> gym social hour. Thank God you do, honestly, because I do not like talking to people at the gym. And everywhere I go, I put head- headphones in so no one will talk to me. But when you go on runs in your neighborhood, um, do you wear headphones? No. You know, you're mentally strong. I will say that. You have the willpower of a god because not only have you been sober for so long, but so many other things you also do. But my cross-country coach, because I was always a runner and always exercising when I was a kid, my cross-country coach used to always tell me that you run with music to get physically in shape because you actually like run faster and harder and work out faster and harder when you have a tempo and you're not hearing your own breathing. But you, you work out or run without music, without headphones, to gain, to get mentally stronger. And so you, when we were training for races, we could, he would allow us sometimes to train with music, but a lot of the times he said it's way more important to be mentally strong than physically strong because you always have 10% more in you physically than you think you do, but mentally, like, that's what keeps you going in a race or not. So and, you're just building your mental strength. And you run with God to build your spirit. That's right. Right off a cliff. I just, I can't be asked no, to work out without it's, music. It's, um... Oh yeah, you're 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 you know I go on a little go a little run with the demons, you know, with all the with all the schizo friends in my head, you know. That's true. And we the voices in your we, head. We we work things out. We figure it out. Yeah, I've gotten to where it's like I'm pretty good at almost like kind of not thinking about much <laughs> for certain periods of the run. Yeah. Which is nice. Sometimes, like, and sometimes I'll just replay nonsense in my head. Just yeah. complete dog shit, like, stuff I saw. I'll, I'll think about cars and videos on Instagram and TikTok I watch. Just complete garbage. Yeah. A lot yeah. of times, then I'm just, like, looking and stuff. A lot of the times, though, when I go on runs, I usually, like, am focused on something. Like, a lot of times, it's like, all right, I got to make two videos tomorrow with this chick. What the fuck are you? Why do you make any money? Why the fuck is anybody going to watch the eight, 18,000th family therapy video? We don't know. Why? Mm-hmm. For what? What the fuck is going to happen? And I'm just running. I'm like. <laughs> and every time the answer is feet. <laughs> and but usually, you know, within, you know, within, a, within, t- you know, 10 minutes or so, like I, f- I figure some shit out. And I'm like, yeah, we did it again. <laughs> oh, shit. That's awesome. I'm going to be able to eat this week. Yeah. See, I did it when I bike. I That's just awesome. think. But I just think about like when I was happier in life and then i also think about like what if i met a celebrity how would i pitch myself to them please save me yeah how would i be like <laughs> please brad pitt matthew mcconaughey please save me from this hell so just utter nonsense yeah and i say <laughs> and i say and i say his name wrong and i'll be like matthew mcconaughey please please save me i hate my life you know or whatever no i think about some produ- i think about some productive stuff but i'd be lying if it wasn't like 70 percent bullshit I listen to motivational music and think about how I'm going to plot world domination and how if I just keep persisting and I keep pushing through the pain, it's going to pay off. Not you two, though. No. Not you two schizo brains. Well, see, also part of it's I've been too lazy to, like, buy headphones, so... <laughs> I like <laughs> and I'm you, just kind of like, I literally I'm good have, like, without four it. Pairs. But see, I also and now you know that now you know, you know I Andrew Tate is a controversial figure, and I feel very many different ways about him. But there's many things he said. Oh, what's his tenant? Let's bring up Andrew Tate. Did not wear headphones. <laughs> Andrew, he says not. The Andrew Tate segment of every he podcast. He says not to wear headphones because you lose your situational awareness, and I completely agree. Well, that's what they say to women. They say don't wear headphones always to me because they're like someone's going to come up and rape yeah, you, and you're not going to know. Whether it's at the jam or like I, I can hear what's going on. I can hear what's going on. This so, is called being a paranoid so schizophrenic. In, so instead of you not knowing... It's called being ready. So instead of you not knowing you're about to die, you know you're about to die. No, because then I can react. Yeah. To what? To, to danger. How? I flee. I flee. And you trip over, <laughs> and you tri- you trip over a dumbbell and brain yourself. You could always put one headphone in. I, I personally think you running without headphones is so good for your mental strength so that's awesome i literally i just told but him, you might work out harder if you had if you had music i literally just told him buy airpods i'm gonna buy him some now buy airpods and don't play anything so people don't talk to you I, i'm gonna that, buy him I, airpods I, and i'm gonna engrave them with teen feet i would never i would never do that i would never do that do what? I, I never wear fake headphones <laughs> i would not do that for what because it's like the amount he of time likes somebody, being bothered the, no he, the, he does like the, it. the amount of time somebody talks to me it's very you know 
it's like one out of maybe five times I'm working out or something. You know? you and, and listen, some of these other, like I'm becoming an old man. Some of these other old men at the gym, they they need some friends. They need to they need to be able to say hi to somebody. You know, you're you're like a pillar. And in your what community. the fuck am I? What the fuck am I doing? I I I'm gonna come home and play Armored Core, and jerk off and, and eat food. I can put that off for ten minutes. I can delay my workout and talk to Glenn about tell him the cars I own again for the tenth time. <laughs> <laughs> you're the type of man, you know, that like and back then he in says, the day. Like, yeah, you got Rolls Royce too. Is it new? And I'm like, well, it's a 2017. He's like, oh, so you got an old one. <laughs> That's nice, though. Fucking burn, Glenn. And then he tells me for like the eighth time how he really wants a C8, but he could buy one, but he'd rather just keep his money in investments. And then about his knee <laughs> acting up. And it's <laughs> it's the same thing every fucking And he's time. like, you do those videos, right? <laughs> that must be nice. I thought about doing that when I was younger. <laughs> My God. It's so funny because I've heard the same exact story no less than 14 fucking times about the same guy yeah. with the same details every time. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Well, this is what I think about him. I feel like back in the day when people didn't, we weren't so globalized, people didn't travel so much, you had your town... And then, you know, the, the pillars of the community rose up and supported everybody, made, a, made everybody form a community. That would be him. He's a homebody. He doesn't like to leave his town. He builds a community where he is. He, he is a public servant. That really is what you yeah. are. Back in the well, day, you would have been I, the mayor I, of your see, town. The thing is, like, you guys, you, know, you guys give me shit about, like, not wanting to go anywhere or do anything. It's, I've already done that shit. Yeah. The, a lot of I the, don't give you shit. You do sometimes, <laughs> both, and, and not just you. Other people do because it's like, oh, you don't travel. That you don't want to go to Nightmare LA. You don't want to. It's like, <laughs> I've traveled all over the country when I was younger, doing absolutely degenerate stuff and getting in trouble and experiencing life. And now, I've built a good life for myself. Why do I, I don't need a lot of the travel stuff? It's people running away from, from lives they don't. They don't like it that much. Now, and of course, if you're rich and famous, that's not what it is. It's just you want to go and hang out in Europe with celebrities <laughs> and have fun. And like, I get that. That's fun. But to me, as an old man now, if I was a younger woman having some champagne in Berlin, it, I, I don't, me. there's nothing for me there. There's nothing, it, for, there's, what's there for me is irritation. Cultural exploration. I could see, I can see it on YouTube. I know, I get it. I can see it I on YouTube. I get the idea. I get the whole idea. body, and that's okay. <laughs> I don't, I just don't, I don't need to be bothered. Do you feel like if you traveled and shit, you, you, well, yeah, you would just, you would just, the, the inconveniences would be, I do, do you want to use drugs and alcohol again? It's, well, it's like, I, I wouldn't, I don't think there'd be any real temptation for me to get yeah. fucked up, but I just know that, I just do still have that feeling of like, if you're traveling, it's, you're not traveling right if you're not kind of fucked up, so. Yeah, your brain I just, is irrevocable. I just feel like that's part of the experience. And, and to take to take that out of it is like, because it, to be, the boozing on the plane a little bit, and then the, it's like, it takes all the rough edges off all that stuff. Uh, and to me, it's just it, it just would seem like weird. I don't know. I just I just like don't the, see the, the brain point. of an addict. I you know. I understand it because for you it would be just the idea. I it mean, would just, be frustrating. I, I can't. I can't. I can't tell you. I mean, the idea of of being on a six hour, ten hour plane ride to to go see God. I would no. Yeah, I can't even imagine can't, you doing that. I, no, I, you would be pissed. I, and the idea to me that he'd it, fight someone. I I just it just seems absolutely so insanely like, bro. Whatever is there is not that good. I don't need to do that. Now I, I get it. You're worth a hundred million dollars. You got a private jet. I I might revisit the traveling thing at some point. <laughs> probably not because I'll probably not have that much money. But otherwise, like a lot of it, just you did struggle enough. I guess you put yourself in enough uncomfortable environments when you were young that you don't have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations anymore. That's a big part of my code. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is to to, is to, uh, to to shriek and run away at any sign of things I don't want to deal with. Yeah, that's very like a big good rat. synopsis of you. Yes, yeah, like a big fat rat. Like a big rat who's got <laughs> just enough cheese big to survive. Fat rat. Yeah. He loves his cheese in his nice dark corner. Yeah. Because well, cause out so, because th reality is, I li listen because I live in reality. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm forced to. Okay. Yeah. I, a lot of people don't ever achieve any kind of good kind of life for themselves, for a lot of different reasons. And I have. I don't. Why am I going to fuck that up? Why do I want to fuck that? Are up? Are you going to get bored? Yeah. You are? Sure. You might not. You might not. But there's, 
Yeah, I get bored sometimes, but boredom's just part of like, is a little bit of boredom. Does that outweigh? Oh, mostly being able to kind of just chill and do what the fuck I want. Do you ever get un? Because see, for me, I get uninspired and feel really stuck when I'm not like doing going to new places and doing new stuff all the time but I've always well, been see, that way so but that's I'm, just my personality type. I'm working all the time yeah <laughs> I'm, wor- I'm putting out same four, type four to five work. videos yeah but it's but for you that compels you and I have to mentally try to be focused on what I'm trying to create yeah or it's going to be dog shit it's not going to be good I mean that is the making of a genius and within you, a like, few focus years all your energy on one it'd thing. be like Alex Adams who what no I don't those videos suck now you know no. I, mean? I heard he fell off. Going down in the Hall of Fame. Now, sure, we'll th- sure that can it. get that can get old sometimes too. I, I have at different times where I think about like, oh, I wonder if I wonder what's next or what, what do I want to. You know, I might I might not always have this very simple holistic lifestyle I lead today. That's true. It might just be like what you need right now. I don't know if I need it. I don't think I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need it. I, I just think you cling to your to your lovely routine you no. have. You know, I thought you had a serious routine until I learned that apparently you do not have a sleep routine. Like you sleep at all different hours I have different, at all times. I have multiple sleep routines. <laughs> yeah, it sounds on, like it. And it you cycle through the, them. Yeah, it depends on the, you know, what's going on or whatever. Because other than that, I feel like you have a, quite a routine. Like you have a schedule. You shoot on specific days. You nap at the same time every day. You work out at certain times. Yeah. But not sleep. Sleep, sleep you... Sleep for four hours here, four hours there. No, well, a lot of a lot of nights I might go to sleep at like three, and wake up at like eight or nine. Okay. And then, but then some days I'll I might have a couple days a week where it's like after a shoot I'll just be I'll go to sleep at like eight, and I'll <laughs> and I'll sleep for like eleven hours. <laughs> you know. Oh, to live the life of a rich bachelor. I mean, I kind of I kind of would like to get up at like. Like 6 a.m. every day or something. That would be. I would love to do that and work out in the morning. Yeah, well, I, I already work out in the morning, but it would just be cool to to get up really early and then like down here because it's hot. It's like you know I've you kind of have to like run in the morning or at night, yeah. so it'd be cool to. That's why I haven't been exercising at all. But it it would just the thing that stops me from like really doing that all the time is that is that like I'm a big nap enthusiast. Yeah. I hate that we start talking about all this stupid shit instead of the spooky stuff. I hate this. Oh, let's this talk is about the spooky most stuff. Boring, stupid shit. I like talking <laughs> yeah, about this. I hate this. Wait, but can we actually talk about more spooky stuff then? Because I really want to. Oh, um, well, I take a nap between um, <laughs> usually between hey, the three thirty and hear five. About, I find it entertaining because I think that your sleep schedule is hilarious. Personally. Hey, are you a big loser? That takes naps. So is Alex. This Adams. is the Alex <laughs> Adams show. Don't we want to know all about Alex Adams and his personal life? Yeah, and I I I have hostility towards all these lines of, of questioning also about my lifestyle because I I live how I want to live. You're a private person, and, and w- when I venture Honey, too much into be a new star. new things, I am immediately reminded why. Like, oh no, I've been doing it right. This is not what I want to. And and, <laughs> and, and, and also, I have Aspergers. Yeah. More spooky stories. See, and that's see, that's the, the internet has has tricked people into believing if a man doesn't want to leave his house and has an extensive HO model train collection <laughs> in his basement, <laughs> and it doesn't have a wife, and he's thirty six years old, he has Aspergers or, or something, or he's, he's gay. just, or he's gay. Yeah, he's just living how he wants to live. Oh my god! These are my friends, people. These are my friends. These guys are such fucking losers. Stella should be my friend. They have fucking, they have fucking st- stupid fucking. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Come get her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy shit. This podcast episode should be called Skinwalkers Are Incels. It should be called Have Faith. It should be called Spooky Stories. <laughs> spooky Sundays. Spooky Green Text number 52. But see, what's great about the green text, the spooky creepypastas on YouTube, stuff I listen to, is that I can edit horny sex content for the people while I listen to that. That's very nice. That is crazy. Hot, weird porn edited to the soundtrack of Skinwalker Stories. Rare aesthetic. Rare aesthetic. <laughs> Rare. Rare, maybe never done before. Should be and ba- never to be repeated. It should be banned. <laughs> should be banned aesthetic. I mean, that's what just enlightens this. It... it his his brain knows no box. His brain can just... It's not confined by anything. 
No. And he knows like the perfect formula to just come up with immense creative fatigue. <laughs> this is going good. <laughs> <laughs> An hour into this shit show. This is going good. <laughs> this is like your first like couples therapy session where you've both been <laughs> screaming and crying at each other. And all of a sudden, the fucking the girl is just like, well, this is going good. <laughs> well, this is, this, is well, go- this is fucked. This is going well. This is a rare, a rare night episode for you folks. First one ever. So we decided to talk about religion, skinwalkers, Alex's gym, and sleeping habits. Um, are scary movies really scary? <laughs> I don't really think so. No, they're just I, I think you can you can ask my former neighbor, Robert, if... Uh, if uh, if can we have um, like a weekly, like, or no, 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 weekly is way too much. Maybe just like one horror movie night, team meeting horror night, or like once a month we all watch a scary movie. I'd be able to, to try that once and see how it goes. And they would wouldn't that be kind of fun? Because I wouldn't be as scared because there's two men there to protect me. Oh, I'd be terrified. It we wouldn't. can have snacks. That could be our one like cheat day of the month. We get to have snacks. And and then we, we, we can talk about if the movie was scary or not on the podcast. See, so the problem is, is like when I watch scary movies, I critique everything as if I'm an old Italian man from Staten Island. All right, well, Cause it we'll makes know it to easier. muzzle you. Yeah, you're going to have to. Because <laughs> like, if we're watching like Saw 58 or whatever one they're Actually, on Actually, right I think now, that's kind of part of the, the thing of watching horror movies with a group. Like, you guys talk. Yeah, well, because I'm going to be like... It's not like a romance movie. But what's this guy's name? Jagoff? Jagsaw? What's he <laughs> on a tricycle? How does he see out of the mask? I, when I put the mask on, I can't see anything. <laughs> Is he going to cut this guy's li- I saw a guy named Johnny get his liver cut out once by the mob on 48th Street. Oh, I know what we could do. Did you know that on September 30th, thir- 30th there's horror, horror nights? Horror nights? Oh, there ain't no way you're going to horror nights, bro. You are smoking. I love going to horror nights. In, I, Cal- in L.A., I've gone to Fright Night and Horror Night. I would... Li- or whatever it's called. Hor- I would... What's it called? I would give up uh, a month of my salary to see him go to horror nights. Well, I went to horror nights in... What is that what it's called? Yeah, Horror Nights, Halloween Horror Nights. Okay. Well, I went to it in LA for the first time and it was actually fucking terrifying. The mazes, I'm amazing at. Like where they you go walk through dark mazes, you know, based on all these other things and things jump out at you and I I don't even flinch. But then when you're just walking through crowds of people and a clown with a chainsaw starts chasing after you and chases you into a dark corner, it's really scary. <laughs> Can we go to like? Can we go to L.A. and instead of going to that place, we go to Skid Row, like the real horror? Okay, nights? see that is what I mean by what is actually scary to me. Yes, Skid I don't, Row. I don't made want, into a horror movie. Skid Row just filmed for like four days is a horror movie to me. Skid Row skill, filmed for forty eight seconds is a horror movie. Scarier than anything. Because ab- mental illness, suffering, that kind of stuff just freaks me the fuck out. Hey, what's wrong with people living how they want to live? Well, then that's what skinwalkers what represent to me. It's not that they're yeah. like mythical. That's not what's what scares with, me. What's wrong with doing the lean? It's that it's like literally just a psycho person in your bushes that's like mentally doing ill. Drugs. Let them do drugs. Did you guys watch Christian Bale in The Machinist? Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. That movie scares me. Yeah. I watched him in uh, Dallas Buyers Club. I like that one. That was a really good movie. Kind of reminded me of you a little Wait, bit. Wait, he was in Dallas Buyers Club? He was the main character, yeah. I thought that was Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. uh, it was McConaughey. Yeah, God, sorry. Get your fucking They facts fucking right. look the same. One's British. First of all, Christian Bale, way hotter. That's a controversial statement. But yeah, Christian be- Bale is that's hot. Because I agree with you. I that's because you're a fake right? Londonite. He's gay, and he agrees, so obviously we're correct. He loves all men. It doesn't matter. His opinion is null and void. No. Wait, it wasn't Christian Bale who played American Psycho? Yeah. It was. Hottest man on the planet. Yeah, no, I mean, he's the uh, ultimate sigma. Yeah. The fuck are you talking about? And you're going to tell me Matthew McConaughey in, uh, what's that, 10 Days to Launch or whatever, 10 Days to Die, 10 Days to Get Your Bush. Well, how to Lose Guy in 10 Days. Too, right? Yeah, he was in Interstellar. Yeah. No, Matthew McConaughey's super hot, but I'm just telling you, Christian Bale is way hotter. Yeah, I'm t- he I, is a psychological girl, genius. Girl, I'm telling you right now. Uh, girl. <laughs> Christian no, Bale. right now. Christian Bale don't got nothing on Maddie McConaughey's ribs. Do you want to know who my celebrity crushes are? All because of their mental genius. Robert Downey Jr., Christian Bale. I don't remember the rest of them. Robert Downey Jr. Maybe Tom Hardy. Robert Downey Jr. is just a reformed cokehead. Why is he? First of all, he was a heroin addict. And a cokehead. Whatever, and a lot of other things. Second of all, he's a genius and he's hilarious. He's a genius. Why is he a genius? He is. Because he's Iron Man? He's a genius. 
And by the way, I love reformed addicts. I understand that, but you keep saying he's a genius, and I ask you why, and then you say he's a genius just again. Just look at just when you hear him talk, everything he's so talented, he's so cool. It's almost he's like so he's so clever. It's almost like he's very charismatic, and a part of his job is to get you to like him and think he's what smart. What do you have against RDJ, huh? What do you he's, have against Iron Man? He's just he's sexy as fuck, isn't he? He's just being a seed lord. Yeah, he he's is because he thinks he's not he's hot. Not or something. Ce- he's not a celebrity who's worth three hundred million. Okay, Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. Christian I will Bale, be. <gasps> Woody Harrelson. Do you guys like Woody Harrelson? Well, like, young Woody Harrelson. I like him now because he's, he's an old stoner UFO person. He was so hot when he was young. And he hates the vaccine, which is funny. They're all smart is the thing. They're all so smart, and that's why I like them. Tom Hardy. Ugh. Tom Hardy got fat. Oh, he's so hot. He's I, the so way hot. he talks makes me angry. What's wrong with you? Just, this is why you're not gay. You have no insight here. Who's your ultimate celebrity crush as a woman or man? Uh, carrot, mm-hmm. carrot Top. I don't know who Carrot Top is. That's a good choice. <laughs> a good choice. What's, who's Carrot Top? You don't know who Carrot Top is? No. Guy, we eight years old. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Are you on our podcast, Eight Years Old, with your he's underwear out? He's a comedian. He's a comedian. Like, he got big in, like, the 90s and stuff. He he was, like, he's, like, a prop comedian. Yeah. Which is really the worst kind of comedy yeah, just the most hokey, like, He'd just hacky. go on late night shows and, like, have a suitcase and be like, oh, this is a chicken, a rubber chicken. <laughs> Hong <Yeah>. Kong. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, 10 years ago, he, or 15 years ago, he started doing, like, a ton of steroids. And he got, he got jacked. Yeah, and, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he's just a good, you know. It's pretty cool. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't kick him out of bed. That's like how Barney is a tantric sex specialist now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, makes sense? I mean, he worked with those kids for so long. I don't have any celebrity. What? Jay-Z? I don't know. Jay Z is your celebrity <laughs> crush. You want to get you want to get pounded by Jay Z? Yeah, sure. Why not? No, I don't know. You don't have any celeb. You don't. You don't seem like a I'm celeb so culture kind of person. All, yeah, I can't even. But do you ever I, like watch a movie and you think, damn, that th- actress is fucking gorgeous? No, no. I maybe when I was like a little kid or something. But I, yeah, there's hasn't there's no there's no like actresses like I've seen in the last twenty years where I'm like, oh, oh my god, she is so, so hot. She just does it for me. I, I don't what about that. Stella Berry? Yeah, yeah, no, like uh, girls that do pornography. Yes. Yeah, actually, you yeah. you actually might have some s- s- pornographer cr- s- celebrity crushes. Yeah. But that's almost every porn girl. Yeah. That's decently hot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because guys will ask me that sometimes too. Like, oh, what's your dream? And I'm like, I don't know. Well, Johnny obviously, Sins. it's Christian Bale. Yeah, Johnny Sins. Christian Bale's so but any, hot. Any any chick that's just like. <laughs> Super, it's hot, then yeah, you know. What I mean, I don't, because I, I, I just think more. As again, I'm cursed to kind of mostly live in reality most of the time, unfortunately. And when people like ask, "What?" Well, I just like she's not gonna work with me, bro. I don't. Yeah, it'd be cool if she did. Hillary Clinton. She's yeah, not it'd be working. great she's, if, if Hillary Clinton slides my DMs. I'd love to make a fucking. She's movie. not working with you, bro. I got bad news. Sarah but she's not. Yeah, that would be great, but she's not no, she sliding my DMs. No. Nancy Pelosi, not fucking with you. God, I wish, bro. We made Diane Feinstein, hundred million views on not fucking with you. Marjorie Taylor Greene, don't they need some money? You. Don't they want like they're already twenty thousand dollars? Five hundred million dollars. <laughs> they're politicians. They start. They their their salary is one hundred and seventy five k, and then four years later, they're worth eighty million dollars. Why the God, fuck would they ever do that? If only we could be so lucky to be politicians. It's very easy. Just literally coke and binge your way to the top, and then then just trade on inside information without going to jail for it. I would never. In actual truth, want to be a politician? Why? It literally so seems it. like the most hellish job. Yeah, but in that's the why world. you do it for four years and you make several hundred million dollars. I million could, million. yeah, and sell your soul. Yeah, who cares about your soul? It's you know, fake. I feel like porn people, not all of them, are the only people left with real souls. I agree. That is a controversial. Everybody statement. else sells their soul for money, whereas we're out here fucking defending our souls. That's right. And also making money. <laughs> yeah, but but if, being rejected from society. If, if, if you want to be part of society and a part of the actual structure of society and not rebel against it, you've sold your soul for money or your time. If I could take the uh, the opposing view for a moment here, I would argue that uh, you've sold your morals for money and you put things in your butt for money. Um, morals are completely relative and subjective. What is the definition of morals? Is morality good versus bad or right versus wrong? I think morality is just like a set of principles to like you kind of like live by isn't wouldn't that be ethics yeah ethics and morality are different though one of ethics and morality one is good versus bad and one is right versus wrong do you guys know okay we need to figure this fucking out we need to figure this out for next time you went to nyu like why i used to know this okay okay ethics is right versus (laughs) wrong 
morality is good versus bad. And that's why morality is subjective and morality is not real because there is no such thing as good and bad. Nothing is good. Nothing is bad. Everything just is. Well, Whereas ethics are a real thing. Well, folks, you heard it here first on the Alex Adams show. Definitive, definitive statement. See, I, I, I think, though, there's, you know, selling, selling your soul, selling yourself or whatever. It's, it's really it's all subjective thing of like what you're what you're actually OK with or not. Yeah. If well, you do selling any, your if, soul is about like, can you sleep with yourself? Yeah. Well, night? you know, and anything you do, it's like there's a lot of things. If you're, if you're doing something just for money or power or whatever, and it's like you really don't want to be involved in that and you feel bad about it, but you need to make, you know, you need to make money or whatever, then that's, but that's most people with most jobs. Yeah. So the thing is, that, yeah, there's plenty of like fucking chicks or, or guys doing, you know, sex stuff that don't want to do it and feel bad about it all the time. And it's like, yeah, sure, you're selling yourself or whatever in that situation. But there's a lot of people do it who like, they're inclined to do that and they're like, I kind of like this. It's pretty cool. Exactly. And it's like, but that's... A, it could be the same action you're saying. It's just how people yeah, cope with it. But at yeah. the same time, like, you're like the, you're, you know, you're the regional manager at Costco now. And, uh, you know, you've put 15 years in this job. And it's, goddamn it's a good job. And, you know, you're making um, 125K a year. Yeah. But you know you've wasted the past 15 years of your life. You're going to waste another 20. Yeah. And you want to kill yourself and your whole family every night. Exactly. And that's but called selling your soul. You got you just bought that new brand new Jeep Wagoneer. And, goddamn it's nice. It's got the wood interior. The, you know, Macintosh yeah. sound system. And you kind of like that. Sometimes you don't have a fucking choice. Sometimes it is easier and you have to suck it up. But it's like, it's sad. And it's not, it's not like that. Someone, someone might really love that job. And then it's perfect for them. But then it's really sad when the person doesn't like that job. And they just feel like they're stuck in it. And then yeah. at night, they, before they go to sleep, they have to like take sleeping meds. Because otherwise they are awake with the nightmare that is their life. Yeah. That's what selling your soul is. I, I Shout mean, out, Robert. <laughs> I mean, I mean to yeah, me, what is definitely real is like. Money is not worth doing something you like really hate, unless it's a lot of money, yeah. like more than most people fucking money. Because then like with money eight, you can buy freedom. Yeah, like a hundred k a year to do something like you like just truly like fucking hate for years and years is like not worth it. That's what like to me before I started doing the porn thing, you know, my dad got me. He hooked me up with this like union gig. The, the construction thing I was doing for a few months was like I didn't work for him, but he got me on another crew. He put my name in the union hall, whatever, you know, union mm. stuff or whatever. And they hired me on at like $18 an hour, starting as a grunt, picking up dirt, things in the dirt. That's you pretty know? good. Which, and then if I would have done an apprenticeship after a few years, I could have been making 70, 80K a year, 100K a year with overtime. But I was like, I, man, I really kind of don't want to, like, I just realized, like, oh, this is going to be like the rest of my life. Mm hmm. Do, you know what I mean? Like, not to objectively, it's a great thing to do. I was, I'd be working on like electrical stuff. I like electricity. I think it's great. I'm a fan, an electricity enjoyer myself. But I was like, <laughs> me too. To I'm do an and a lot of it was like the guys I was working with. I just didn't really like a lot. Just they're just drunk old rednecks, and it, it, I just, I was like, it's not. And it was like way more money than I made in the Marines. I was probably making like thirty thousand dollars a year in the Marines, mm -hmm. twenty five thousand dollars a year. And then you get the government cheese. You get the Eat for free and stuff, so it's a good gig. Good cheese. But I enjoyed that so much more than the job making four or five times as much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, I was like, no, I'll just go do sex stuff in Florida, man, and figure it out. I don't know. I don't. I was. I felt suffocated. I was like, I'm not. Yeah. I, there was no like, oh, I'm gonna go to Florida and I'm gonna get a micro state. I'm gonna fucking because you're a sigma. Lamborghini Huracan Performante, like all that stuff. All that mental illness came later. You know. It's because you're a sigma. I, I can't even imagine you in a job like that now. Like you're so meant to live like this I, I on your so own. Too, yeah. <laughs> you, you are not just rich, but I just mean like <laughs> on your own. Rich and autistic. Clock, <laughs> however you want to live. Oh my god! <laughs> a lot of people can. Could, could, you're could so meant to, to just have uh, Nick see, as your. But see, also assistant. though, like there, there's times, there's times where I do miss um, being told what to do. Yeah, just the daddy, just really just putting the law down. Oh, I could do that. I could do that real fucking easy. That'd take a few seconds. Why don't you go and clean up all his podcast shit? He's going to start paying you to dominate him. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's, that's exhausting. No, I, I just, it's, uh, I, you know, sometimes I miss a little bit more, some of the structure a little bit. Yeah. But uh, mostly of like when I was in the Marines. When you had friends? 
Yeah. When you were alcoholic. He's got friends now. Friends. No, I got a lot, plenty of friends. Well, but see, that's the, thing, but the thing is, or even other, some other jobs, too, where it's like, you know, because it's like you're in this together. You're in this fucked whatever situation with people. You know, most days of the week where it's like you go in, you see, it, there's a camaraderie there. You know, there's there's a there's certain kind of like bonds. Maybe not everyone appreciates it, but a sick fuck like me can appreciate that a little bit. The homeboys. You know? And um, and that's the thing with this kind of lifestyle. It's like there's a lot of the time where I'm alone. Yeah. And it's, I'm like, thank fucking Christ. Yeah. You choose. You do choose. <laughs> but that. which it's like I do like that a lot. Um, but also there's times where I'm like, you know, I don't have to clock in and see Gary at the Radio Shack today. Mm-hmm. Hope he's doing all right. He's dead. Definitely dead years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. See, that's the thing. Sometimes with like this kind of lifestyle I built for myself, you, you there's so much freedom. It can be kind of a little overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Where you just feel like it's kind that's of the thing. Sick, it's, it, it's like when you have it. it it's it's more. I I'll keep it. Imagine. I'll keep it. Don't like. But it, don't take. I'm please, actually. This is the first time I'm really don't, realizing how much freedom you have. Please don't take it away. Because that's the reality. Please don't take it away from me. Even even you more than me. Even like you can do it almost almost anything or go anywhere you want at any given time. Yeah, well, I have I have like locational freedom, but you have a type of freedom where no, it's like No, also, but even further than that, you have more freedom yeah, even than me true. in like even like the amount of like workload that I kind of need. I don't have to That's do true. It. You have a I work just, routine. I could just stop filming. I'd be fine. Yeah, you'd be fine. But you you've know, stuck yourself. I might have to sell the GT4. Routine. I don't know. You know what I mean? But I have to get rid of a few pieces. I do have a f- I do freedom in that way. I might but have to part with this for a couple hundred k. Your <laughs> hermit, your level of being a hermit is like a different type of freedom. Whereas I am very, like, I've got family and and people in different states and things that I'm constantly flying to go see. I have responsibilities to a lot of people. You don't have responsibilities to like anyone except yourself. So that's a different type of freedom you really do have, and you actually have a lot more money than me. Debatable. No. Debatable. Because he spends nothing. He has no dependents. And he has a lot of money coming in. I've seen this man blow a whole rack And he's been doing shit. this for so long. I've seen this. Man, let me tell you something. You could spend money like water, girl. So, like, he's got, he's got real, a lot of freedom. A yeah. Too well, much I think about, like, say so see, what, to, to stuff, you know, about visiting your family or whatever. But, I mean, at the same I, I just feel like even more than me, like, you can kind of devote your attention to anything. This week I made so much money I did zero work. Yeah. Well you, but see, that's the thing. It's like for me, it's like I to keep things kind of going now I have it, I have to be hunched over the Windows Movie Maker. I have to be, yeah. I have to be. Thank God you like it. And I do for the most part. You know what I mean? But it's, which at the same time though, it's like, I could do way, way less. You know, I mean, I could fucking, yeah. you know, and still, but I don't know. I don't know much else that I really want to be doing necessarily. Are there any sexual things you want to be doing? No. What if I came over once a week, locked you in a dog cage, put a collar around your neck, made you drink milk out of a bowl? Would that fulfill something deep inside you? <laughs> Only <laughs> one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, Let's some try weird that next puppy week. play fetish. <laughs> No, just it's. Just I just feel like even sexually, like play. I, you know, I'm still very horny. I, I just feel like most. I feel like I've done all the kind of freaky, strange shit. Yeah, you've already really, been locked in a dog cage. To where it's to me, it's just like, okay, uh, the, 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 the fuck a few girls. You know, maybe. You know, maybe a guy gets involved as well. Like, I, I, there's well, not. You know, even, we should. But do even that, for, so. for me, the most part, it's it's just like, if I'm fucking a hot girl, like I'm I'm good, man. You're yeah. easy to please. Yeah. You know, I might do different stuff depending on the chick or whatever, you know. But it's like, I don't need, I, you know. There's not much more crazier levels I feel like I need to experience. I feel like I can watch those kind of experiences on xvideos.com. <laughs> this video Valid brought point. to you by xvideos.com. Discount. They, they've, they've sponsored me to pay me uh, $6.50 <laughs> for this paid sponsorship to Discount xvideos.com. Discount code uh, jizz on Alex. <laughs> Isn't there that theory about, like, the mountain, the first mountain, the second mountain, whatever that's called? Where it's, like, your first mountain is, like, securing your own wealth or your own success at something. And then the second is, like, you know, once you secure that and you're successful at that, you 
you need something else to fulfill you. And that second mountain is about finding a purpose outside yourself. Well, in porn, there's a lot of landslides on those mountains. So you think you've got a, a ways up and then you fall. Well, yeah, that's on. true. It's very hard to get to a point of complete security you know, so, financially yeah. in this business because you never know when it's going to be ripped out from underneath you. Exactly. So They should make a porn-themed horror movie. And I would be in it. If anyone wants to cast me in a horror movie, I, re- I, I have messaged Gaspar No Way multiple times to say hey please cast me in something because he doesn't well, cast actors he like casts just some regular on people that they want to put you in a movie oh yeah there's they quite a few me. people that message me saying that i will make their movies successful but i'm uh, the only person well we've got a large we've got a large following on this show of elite hollywood deal makers and some people just, have approached me about movies i just like not legit actually there's been a couple times i've gotten legit emails about movies where they want to like me to come try out for it and it's a legit like production company and shit, and I just I don't. If, if Quentin hits me up, I'm available. Otherwise, no, thank you. Someone, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, it depends. If it's a horror movie, I'll do it. But someone commented this on my TikTok the other day, and they were like, "Hey, why when you're so beautiful and amazing and gorgeous, <laughs> did, a movie, Hollywood movie star, did you decide to to go into porn instead of be an actress where you'd make more money and be more famous and have a better lifestyle. Like that's just the choice. Like it's yeah, just like well, easy. Well, well no, I was looking at it like being an actress, the large majority of actresses make less money, work way harder and have a way worse lifestyle. Like I've been on set for things. It's a nightmare. Like even just photo shoots Hellish and stuff. Hellish nightmare. You're there all day long. Remembering lines is like so painful and it's just so much more work than we have to do. Yeah. Like the job I'm in, if you're, if you're a, 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 I don't even know, F, F list, F list, F list actress. Yeah. Like I am in this industry. Hey, uh, you're, you're D list. D list. Okay. If you're a D list actress, you make no money. You're going to castings nonstop with your life and hardly getting any of them. It's not easy. You have to love it. Right. To make that worth it. Yeah. Whereas in this industry, you can be literally unknown and make good money. Yeah. So I thought that was a completely backward (laughs) statement. Like, yes, I could be an actress or a model. People are like, you're so beautiful. Why don't you just model? It's like, oh, so I can be on someone else's set where I'm exhausted all day long listening to other people's orders and getting paid nothing. It's Hollywood. Yeah. So, no, I'm literally not interested in acting. I'm really not unless it's a horror movie. Then I want to be really creepy. I want to be a creepy, possessed daughter in a house. Yeah, Quinn, if you, need me, if you need me to lick somebody's feet, I'm there. Baby. Yeah, <laughs> I'm there. Yeah, anything foot fetish related. I'll charter well. a jet. Yeah. I'll be out there in the Hollywood Hills with you. I'm kind of craving watching a horror movie. But that's a, I've had I've had uh, I've had people say the same shit to me, like completely insane people. Where like I'm thinking, like, why would you even think? But like, Alex, you're just so good at acting. You should be a, a movie star. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> it's like number Alex, one, no, I'm not. You're so good at it. No, I'm not. Alex, your weenus is so beautiful. You're, you're and it's like, like, you're like my big sister. I'm told the same thing. It's like, that's a completely different kind of lifestyle for that's no just money. delusional people. I'm just like, why? Now, what? yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I couldn't it's, be an actress. Now, yeah, it's like if you're on set all day for months and you're making $30 million, hey, I could do that. Yeah, if, it, if the choice <laughs> is between doing porn and being Angelina Jolie, I'll pick Angelina <laughs> Jolie, but it's like literally not... That that way. Hey, Stella, why didn't you just be Angelina Jolie? <laughs> yeah, why didn't? Why did you do that? Well, you're stupid. Oh God, it could only be so good. No, I. I. It, it sounds horrible. I don't want to be an actress, unless it's a horror movie. There's a, there's a lot of people that are a little delusional about a lot of, you know, different things in life and and what the actual requirements are and how rare it is to to be able to achieve certain kinds of exactly. things. Exactly. Especially in like the, the movie industry, just seems like, you know, you you're just a pawn when you're an actor or an actress. You don't have any power at all. You say what you have to say. You stay on set for as long as you have to stay on set. You memorize the lines you have to. I can't do that lifestyle. No. Yeah, I mean, every day, I you know, I just wish that I would have created a hedge fund. <laughs> but uh, me too, honestly. We were just with some see, finance the thing, guys and the, today, and the, and the the problem is. In school, they didn't tell me, hey, you become a hedge fund manager. I didn't even know that. They don't teach you how to be a hedge fund manager in school. They you don't tell say. you you can just make money off other people's You can be money. worth $3 billion mm-hmm. and controlling, you know, $20 billion in assets. Yeah. We need this why capitalist society why needs they teach to you just that? Rage, raise hedge, like hedge fund uh, It's a secret that they don't want you to know. 
Isn't that crazy? I'll let the audience infer what they will from my statement. <laughs> oh god well you have anything else you want to say to that or is it, is this the end come has everyone gone silent yeah it's been an hour and 25 minutes I mean that's a great time we don't yeah, always we need to go another, for five hours another hour easy <laughs> how many more topics you want to enlighten the people about um. Yeah. Well, folks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for uh, if you made it this far. I know some of us didn't. Thank uh, thank you guys for joining us for the the Alex Adams show. Do the thing where you say comment something. Oh, if they right. made it to the end. Oh yeah, let me think. Uh, comment your favorite conspiracy theory. Ooh, I like that one. In the comments, and next episode in like six months, we'll talk about you're it. You're supposed to. You, it should be more. Comment a, a, you have a paranormal spooky activity that's happened to you. Okay. Yeah, Same comment thing. your favorite fucking I, one time my sock drawer, I went in there and I thought I had two <laughs> and I thought I had two white socks and, <laughs> and there was only one white sock and I thought there was a ghost and then it turned out that <laughs> one of the white socks was actually in my shorts from the dryer and and <laughs> and I had my whole house fumigated, and I shot my dog in the head. <laughs> See, yeah, what that category of story is called is a glitch in the matrix story. Yeah, I, I can't. There's I can't. glitches in the matrix. <laughs> See, he could, he knows everything about about everything. Yep, I do. <laughs> comment your comment your favorite spooky story or your favorite conspiracy, whichever one you want. Uh, you know, Wendigos, Skinwalkers. Because for some people, yeah, conspiracy let me, let me theories know. are the I, horror. I think I might have messed up the Wendigo Skinwalker thing, so a few of you experts out there can, can clarify. Yeah, please let us bit. know if Alex was completely <laughs> fucking talking out of his asshole. If we do not uh, post anything after this episode is uploaded, just know the Skinwalkers got us. Just because know we literally mentioned them a billion times, and you said they're not supposed to be named. No. If we like don't, Voldemort. If we don't, yeah, if we don't post another one, just know that they got us. <laughs> they got us. Okay. Oh, it's scary out here. It really is. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we should do more night episodes. It's been a pleasure. This was a cool night episode. I beat that boss in Armored Core. He beat he beat Brolabinus. Yeah. And, you Bal know, Baltarius or whatever. He, he beat the big robot because he finally big changed balls. Finally changed his loadout after five days of being a stubborn boomer and not doing it. Did any 12-year-olds DM you their build? No, unfortunately not. No respect. <laughs> no respect. Lame. Didn't need your help. Didn't need, <laughs> thanks for did, nothing. This didn't boomer need, did it all by himself. Didn't need you kids helping him. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Oh, and oh. please let us know if you would like us to film outside more like this, because at some point we may invest in podcasting setup to podcast outside, if that is something that people want. Eventually, maybe. All 15 of you. You guys let us know what, what are you feeling. Oh, I'm sorry. There with Stella, is at least 100. With Stella here, yeah, it's like 150. 10x. So we love give you guys. A, give them a shot of the souls. Show them the feet. You know what we got to do is how we end the episode. We you want to see something cool? We got no other content. That's the thumbnail. <laughs> there it is. You walked in his grass. There's been poop in there. I guess you're used to eating <laughs> poop. <laughs> 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 uh, what do you got to say about that? You story <laughs> of the poop feed. Everybody eat poop, eats poop every day. Po fecal matter is actually on everything. 80% of things that you touch All have right. fecal matter on them. All right, that's enough Reddit. Thank night, you, guys. Good luck. Have a good one. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye.